making his move after seeing something like that. It was Brazilian, gold in gold. And you can see the determination and satisfaction there from Clayton. Clayton Murphy's going back. What is up? Welcome back to the series. This is part two of breaking down the Tokyo Olympic trials. We're gonna be breaking down the final in this video. We're back in the same shirt, we're back in the ruffles. This is part two. So we're gonna break them all down in the same sitting, but we're gonna break it up in the second video. This final was awesome. Um, it, was, it was a blast to be in. Um, again, I talked about it in the last video. If you missed that one, go watch the first and second rounds before you guys continue this one. Um, it is uh, all intermingled. I know mingles together, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Sticks together. You got to watch them all. Uh, it's a three part race. Uh, everything leads to this point. This is to make the Olympic team. Top three make the team. You know that going in. Uh, the pressure's on to make the team, but the highest pressure to make this final and give yourself an opportunity to team is, is already done and you've checked those boxes. So now you can run with a little more freedom, with a little more energy, uh, and you can kind of get after it. Again, dealing with a hamstring issue all weekend for me. A lot of this issue was built around uh, a tear I had about 10 days before the first round, uh, seven days before the first round, about 10 days before this race. And um, everything was built around if I'm going to tear it even more, if I'm going to hurt myself running, I'm going to do it given it all I have to, to make the Olympic team in Tokyo. So you guys will see quick final, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, but you'll also see me begin, be conservative for the first 300, 400, 500, and then really work over the last 300. And uh, we'll talk about the last 300 as we get to it. But let's get down to it. Enjoy. Athletes will go to Tokyo. This guy is the favorite, Donovan Brazier. Five years ago, it took 144.7 to win these trials. I think Donovan Brazier is going to go faster than that despite the heat here today. And in this field behind him, Bryce Hopper, one of his biggest competitors, was fourth in 2019 at the World Championships from Midland, Texas, went to Kansas, gave up his final year of eligibility, but is still in Kansas with his coach, says that it provides consistency with so many things changing as he transitioned as a pro. And then the only guy in the field with Olympic experience, Clayton Murphy. His personal best is not too far off of Brazier's, and I expect him to be Brazier's biggest threat here this evening. And Clayton Murphy beat Donovan Brazier in the semi-final, but he said that doesn't, didn't really mean anything because we were really kind of going on our own pace. Here is a young man who could force that issue for the third and final spot. That's right, he was the biggest breakout star of the NCAAs. One on this track only 10 days ago in a lifetime best, 144. That makes him the fastest. Summer. So as we get into it now, introductions are over. Um, you're again, I talked about this in the last uh, second video. That part when you're on your island, you gotta make sure that you're in your head in the right way um, within yourself. So again, the starts off, uh, I am again, you can see, I'm much slower than normal. I'm keeping my pace, I'm keeping myself connected to the pack, but also not making sure that I'm not really kind of pushing. You'll see here, again, 12, 13, 14, that 26, 27 pace is kind of that sweet spot I found uh, for most of uh, most of the weekend. Look, okay, we're gonna rewind it here. Look at where 90% of this field goes. Donovan cutting straight across, Isaiah cutting straight across, Isaiah cutting straight across. Bryce and I, both go straight out and look at the space that Bryce and I have and look at the little conjungled mess in lane one. I'll tell you guys, you're not running longer distance. They measured on a tangent to lane one, to the to the peak of, of peak of the curve. Look at where Bryce ends up. Bryce did the perfect pacing, look where he ends up in the lead. Donovan, Isaiah, and Isaiah sprint to lane one and put a lot of effort into that. So So this is this is a little bit different than the than the semifinal. Obviously, with four elite guys in this race, um, I knew I had to be connected to that front pack. I knew there could not be any gaps. I didn't need to be in the top three. I didn't need to be in the top two. But I knew I had to be connected to whoever was in fourth at all times. So I run the least amount of distance around that curve. I see this massive move by Donovan here to, to, to kind of catch up again. And all I do is just close that gap up on these guys because I know I just got to beat two of them. That's the key. That's the key here at 400 is I know I just have to beat two of these guys. I don't have to beat all four. Obviously you want to, you obviously want to win, but you're just trying to beat top four. Isaiah goes through in 50.6. I'm probably, I'd say I'm closer to more like 53. Um, I'm sure maybe Alex here can help me with the splits. Um, I'm well off of that, but there's a huge made. He put on a surge at, he put on a surge right here. And I remember in my head thinking this kid is ballsy. 
I remember thinking this kid is daring, this kid has got it, he is going for it, he's putting it to us. He said, screw the pros, I'm making this Olympic team as a, as a finishing up my, my college career. And I remember this because I was that ballsy kid in 2016. So I saw a lot of, uh, not, I wasn't leading in 2016, but I saw a lot of myself in 2016 as saying, it's, it's me against the world, it's, it's, it's me and myself out here and I'm gonna go get it. But I knew I had to stay connected again to whoever was in fourth. I knew I did not need to make a move in the curve, but I knew I had to be ready to strike down this back stretch. As you see, close up that gap, close right up on him, and just move up down the back stretch. I kind of tuck out again. It's almost the exact same race as those other two. Move down the back stretch. Let's see if they show the uh, outside view. They're not going to, but yep, there it is. Almost the exact same spot again. That third, fourth spot, co cozying up on the outside in lane two. We go through in about 116-ish. 117 is where I went through. So probably again, another 20, what would it be? 53, 54. So another 24, 25. I'm huge negative split right here because that's what I need to do. I really went almost 53, 50, 54, 51, whatever you want to call it. There was some shoving there. It was completely fine. Um, Bryce and I were kind of just going for the same spot at the same time. There's a lot going on in the race. We're all good there. Um, and we just had to get through. At this point, I thought that I could make the Olympic team. With about 150 to go and they made that move, I knew I had the legs to get to the line. I knew I had a pretty damn good shot at making the Olympic team, especially because I saw the, I felt the way Donovan was fading. Um, and I thought I could at least hold off one of these guys behind me. Um, I had no idea if I was gonna catch Isaiah or not, but I knew when I put my foot in the ground here with 120 to go, I was gonna give it all I had to catch him. So you see me right there. I actually glance up at the board. This is a funny story because they're actually replacing the boards in Hayward because of this exact issue. The board is so small in Hayward, I couldn't see who in the world was behind me. So I thought people were coming, but I knew I had to go. I almost tripped over myself looking up at the board, funny enough. But with 100 to go, I really just trying to open up right here. Big arms is kind of one of my things that I kind of always say. Big arms, don't worry about your form. A lot of people are like, keep your form, keep your form. Give it everything you have through the line. Don't, don't mess with trying to stay rigid or formed or whatever you got. Just give it everything you have through the line. Obviously, if you can maintain a little bit of form and a little bit of efficiency, it helps you in the end. But make sure you're grating your teeth. Make sure you're fighting. Make sure you're pumping your arms, getting your feet down quick, doing everything you can to get to the line. I knew at that point I looked back and saw no one was around me. I knew I could kind of get through the line, but I had no idea how fast we were going to run. No idea what was going on. And the scream at the line was obviously cool about winning trials. It was obviously cool about making the Olympic team, but at the same time, it was really about what I went through over the weekend and the 10 days leading up and how much of an up and down 10 days it was. Um, there was moments where I had no idea if I even line up and no idea if I even have a shot at making the team. And to, to make the team in the way I did, the fashion I did, um, was great and all, but just getting through that week and, and persevering through all that was why that kind of entirety was there. Um, that energy was there, the excitement was there, it was so much more than the actual accomplishment itself. So uh, it was a, a wild, wild ride of a weekend. Um, Obviously here, drop the Mbappe celebration on him. Unfortunately, TV decided to cut it, but drop the Mbappe celebration on him. Um, I'm a big F1 guy, and I saw, uh, and, 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 and soccer, I, I enjoy soccer, and I saw Max Verstappen did it, so I thought it was cool that weekend if I kind of followed it up and did a Mbappe um, shout out, as long as a Max Verstappen shout out. So it was fun, I had a lot of fun with it this weekend. Um, a lot of ups and downs, but again, guys, um, make sure you guys are, are staying within yourselves. Make sure you're persevering through it. Make sure you're accepting the toughness of a race and having fun with it. But until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed these two-part series of the Olympic Trials. We'll be breaking down more races. So make sure you guys are subscribed below. Make sure you guys are giving these thumbs up. Comment below maybe what races you guys want to see next. And uh, we'll get to them. I'll break them down. I'll get some new snacks next time. Ruffles are good, but they're not top tier. We'll get some, we'll get some different snacks in here next time, guys. And uh, for now... Enjoy your guys' races, enjoy your guys' practice. Get out there, run some miles. I'll see you guys in the next one. Wow. Isaiah Jewett out in front, all in yellow. Clayton Murphy, hot in pursuit. And Bryce Hopple. So two of the three make their first Olympic team for Team USA. And Clayton Murphy says, I'll go back. I'll go for another medal. 
So Clayton Murphy actually runs a world leading time, 143-1. Well, what a moment for these guys. Clayton, this was a race that was absolutely unpredictable. Take us through the first 400 meters and how you were trying to measure this thing up. Yeah, it's just being really patient. It's kind of worked all weekend. Uh, then Isaiah decided to push it. They decided to push it again. They decided to push it again, and I just kept closing, closing, closing in. The last 100 was just, how tough can I be? Yeah, and you were awfully tough there.